Center started in 89, there was really not that many species on the endangered species list identified as being threatened by grazing or in riparian areas, and very little ESA action was going on. And uh, the big revolution in the late 80s and early 90s was when um, scientists and environmental groups started successfully and independently initiating listing procedures and processes and regulatory oversights on species, which led to a lot of um, logging injunctions in the Northwest and, and huge impacts on grazing. And so what the center strategy was is to identify those unprotected species that were going extinct due to the destruction of, rep of riparian forest and then going through the laborious process of, of getting these species listed, such as the um, Southwest Willow Flycatcher, which was noted on the previous set of slides. So we get the list, species listed, then we go to the Forest Service and the BLM, and we challenged over 300 grazing allotments in New Mexico, Arizona, California, and we were quite successful because the agencies were not following NEPA, they were not following their rules, and we forced them to do that. And um, so there was a lot of activity for about 10, 12 years. Uh, the center was responsible for getting over 400 miles of rivers, getting cattle removed from there, and large uh, desert areas where cattle were removed from there. Um, there's also some successes in central California. Um, so in the late 90s, in the 2000s, things quieted down for us in terms of grazing activity, anti-grazing I mean, anti, uh, lawsuits, and um, and under Bush administration, there was just less species being listed. But now we're, we're gearing up again. Um, in 2011, we were able to secure an agreement with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to fast track the listing of 757 species over the next five years. And many of them are aquatic and riparian species. And so, um, this could open up a whole new front for uh, challenging grazing allotments. And one of the species that you should watch for is the, uh, the Western yellow-billed cuckoo, which was, there's a nice photo of that in the last set of slides. Um, that's a completely riparian dependent and um, currently its strongholds are in previously protected area, but its historic range is essentially all the way up and down from British Columbia all the way down the, the coast, and then it takes a turn over into southern Arizona and New Mexico, and um, there's some intermountain west period areas that it's also um, present in, or could be present in, and the reason it's important is that uh, um, that species is due to be listed next year, and it's a retired, it's entirely riparian forest dependent, and so um, once that species is listed, you know, we might get back into the business of large scale challenges to a lot of these allotments because the Forest Service, the BLM will then have to reinitiate review of existing and past decisions in face of all these new species. So um, we're doing what we can to protect endangered species, um, and that's about all I've got. Let's give Gus a little round of applause.